Two gentlemen, uh, very special personalities, and you can can imagine what's going on in the studio. All right, so gentlemen, uh, there are no meetings within meetings. Okay, so why don't you pay attention to me? Welcome to the studio. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're just missing out. One of people are asking, do you still walk barefooted when you travel abroad? Yes. Like on the plane, you're barefooted. Everywhere. Everywhere. Like when when it's snowing and everything. I haven't been in full snow like the high one. Step in the small ice and the small pieces of snows, but the big one I haven't been there yet. Okay, all right. And you are still comfortable with them? Yeah, How long are you going to do that? I'm, I mean, questions are are being asked. That, if, for instance, if you get some white collar job where you're supposed to knock ties and everything, um, you still go to work barefooted? Ah, uh, the job I'm applying for. No, I'll never do such a job. You won't do such a job. No. Okay. Well, let's let's end it there. All right, Mensa, welcome back to Ghana. Thank you. But well, I, I heard you've been in town. Only that you haven't called base <laughs> Well, and and congratulations. You launched the album on the twenty sixth last on month. On twenty sixth of December. Right. Yeah. How how was the response? Oh wow. Um, for me, it was a sign because it was the day after Christmas Day, and we did the show at Sweeties, which is slightly out of town, and it was a sold out event. You know what I mean? It was very well attended. You know, one of the Kugula was there to support me as well. And, you know, I played with a live band. I was, you know, I was listening to Lady Talata's, you know, um, interview talking about how live music, you know, is great. And so, you know, we, we play quite a bit of live music whenever we can. And that night, it was a beautiful night to launch the number one Mango Street. Every, it went down really, really well. Really, really, really enjoyed it. In 30 seconds, tell me why you decided to name the album after your street. Oh, wow. Well, um, I was here in the summer working on a film with one of the Kubala and during that time I was just so inspired you know what I mean I was, I was writing so much so much music and I was speaking to my brothers and like well you know as soon as you're back home and you're getting all this inspiration why don't you dedicate it to the house where you were raised number one on the street so it's a dedication in a sense to where I was raised and where it all began but it's also a dedication to Ghana and you know where all the influences are from 30 seconds okay I think you're on point but but you told me uh, your assessment of how you're performing in Ghana? I mean, since you're not based here, and uh, this is your second album. Yes. Tell me yes. how the first one performed and how you're projecting this one to be. Well, I mean, the first album is, you know, I don't know if I'm if I'm being big-headed by calling it a classic, but I still have people who come up to me to say, oh, they love that album so much. And young, like, girls my age or women my age actually go to their rooms to show me the cassette. You know what I mean? Say, I still keep this, I've still, I've still kept this, I still play the music. Um, Business-wise, I didn't really know what I was doing then. I was really young. I was only about 19 when I did that album. So, but then, you know, people love that album. People still talk about it. And this one is a very mature album. Very, very mature. It's not alienating, you know, the young people, but it, it gives them something to think about and to realize that, you know, you can actually sit down and put out, you know, good quality. What kind of music, music do you do? Um, I've always had a problem answering that question. What I'll say is my music is influenced by a few things, but I do, I pretty much do what I feel. I, I, I'd say hip hop music is a big influence, high life music, Afrobeat, jazz, a lot of jazz music is, you know, influences the music that I make, but it's just all these influences and then I just put it in a pot and bring my Ghanaian-ness. So how would you describe that pot? Afro, jazzy, Caribbean, poppy life. Do you have an idea what kind of music it does? Um, it's like Obra meets Basta Rhymes and a Jesus film. <laughs> it's my fault. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have asked him. I shouldn't have asked him. Anyway, so um, you're back and with your, you, with your um, exposure, yes. you, you're based in the UK. Mm. You roll with the likes of the Swayze and all the big boys. What kind of music do you think we should be identified with? What kind of music as Ghanaians we should be identified with? That when we say, this is the music coming from Ghana, there should be something about it yeah. to tell. I mean, uh, first of all, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I know Sway. I don't necessarily roll with him. I've produced some music for him and stuff like that. And he's obviously from a different environment all, you know, altogether. So where he's from influences the music that he makes. I think, though, for Ghanaians, as Ghanaians, the best way and it's very easy, it's a very easy formula. Make music that's authentically Ghanaian. We don't realize that that's actually what the rest of the world wants. What are the features of, of that kind of music? Traditional instruments. 
the language, using the language in its richest form. You know, we can inculcate proverbs, you know, wise sayings, our humor, everything. It's so easy. Like, we have it. It's in abundance. But we, we seem to think that if the more we try and sound like the next person, the person in America or even Nigerians, or I'm not saying that they make bad music, but I'm saying that because their music is popular, if we copy them, that's what's going to make our music more accessible. But that's not it. They, you know, Nigerians don't want to hear somebody trying to sound like a Nigerian. Do you see anybody trying to do that? Of course. I mean, now, I, now even in the songs, I hear people singing the pigeon like the way Nigerians speak pigeon. No, am I, am I the, only the, the authentic music that you're talking oh, about. Oh, sorry. Yes, of course. Of course, definitely. There's a lot of musicians out there who I still look up to, and there's a lot of producers there, out there who are still encouraging us to, you know what I mean, to, to make music that's authentic, you know, very authentic and, um, what what's the word for it, you know, very unique to Ghanaians, you know what I mean, and those, that's the kind of music that you can tell the world with, Okay. not trying to sound like Buster Rhymes on the next person. Okay, well, well he, has, he has refused to, to be put in a certain box, I mean, he doesn't even know what the kind of music he does, <laughs> Afro, jazzy, you said what? Jesus, Jesus film. Jesus film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love the Kobolo. <laughs> anyway, so you you give us something. I mean, I'm sure that probably you have been away for some time now. Mm -hmm. I mean, those watching, there are some people who, who came for holidays during the Xmas and yes. in town. They don't yes. know who is Mensa. Who are we talking oh, about? Oh, they all know. Well, who is Mensa? I mean, they all know. They all buzz know. Buzz a few lines. Let's let's. Um, and in Japan, they know Nyam style. My name is a mini bit of men dad out. I'm killing you softly with just a smile. Up a ring a deba. Oh, she's not me a tattoo. Yes, I'm a puka. Now, me and Mr. Cooks. We back at home. Men said you're suing his boots. And yes, she's down crying your boot. We should have a fuka. Hey, for your own betterment. Hot like fine. Just as you should say betterment. You are producing a movie for men, sir. That features you. Hey. So that is a movie. How? Talk to me about it. The movie is Cause of Money. Cause of Money. And um, it's being produced by Panji of Pigeon Music, but and it was directed by Ken Lu of Lu Vision. But Mensa and I co-directed the film. Mm. Mensa produced most of the music for the film, and it's the first ever Pigeon musical. Think of the sound of music, mm. but in Pigeon, mm. with let's say Afrobeat, high life, hip hop, all mixed in together. Everything happens in one day. It's very comedic. It's very um, enjoyable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How are you propagating your Kobolo music? Um, Kobolo is. I haven't is, heard. I haven't heard from you since the the last one. Yes, Kobolo. That's a made an album, right? Yeah, okay. green card. Kobolo is is more than music. The identity of Kobolo is a full lifestyle, mm. and um, for me. As, as being part of pigeon music, I've come to accept that the term pigeon music embraces a lot of the kinds of music that I do. Be it hip life, hip hop, country music, whatever mood I'm in, it can all fit in pigeon because I bring it out in the local speak, whether it's pigeon or tree okay. or this. Mesa, your expectation and your message to Ghanaians. Expectation this year. Oh, wow. Um, I mean, we put in quite a bit of work last year. You know, with the album number one mango streets with the film cause of money so i know definitely you know with the time and dedication that we've put to put to you know myself and one of the kubala on the film and also for the album things are definitely going to well i mean we're going to open a lot of doors mm. for other musicians for other artists for filmmakers things like that but you know things are changing definitely you can de you can definitely tell things definitely change. must change and yeah. i need you to change you know the life of somebody this evening i need you to pick this one it's new right as you can see yes well pick this one scratch it and just mention the digits there don't don't keep it to yourself just mention it i mean really? somebody home yes somebody home is going to win that one okay so I while he's at that let me tell you that when we go for a break i come back with quarter and quarter is telling you what he thinks about what i said a couple of weeks back and plus think about this uh,